Hi, everybody. This is Jackie with Panama Relocation Tours. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. Um, taking time on your Saturday to join us for this live stream to learn how you can make some money when you move overseas or perhaps even before then with an online business. Um, I see a lot of people have already um, said where they're from. If you could let me know if you can hear me okay, I would appreciate that. Can you hear me okay? Let me know in the chat, please. I'm going to plug in this other microphone. Hold on. There. Yeah, can you hear me better now? <laughs> Taking this one out. Now you can hear me, right? Let me know if you can hear me okay. You can hear me? Okay, good. So my name is Jackie Lang with Panama Relocation Tours and I wanna start out with just a little bit of background about how and why I headed down this path of being an entrepreneur versus being an employee. The last time I had a full-time job working for somebody else was 1980. And I was a long distance telephone operator. Originally I worked in California and it was those cord board kind of boards where there were all kinds of little cords that you had to plug into every time a light came on. And then, um, Yes, my lighting's better. And then uh, my husband was in the military and he got out of the Air Force in California and we moved to Texas. So I transferred to a telephone company in Texas where I worked. And um, then my son was born in 1980. And at first I was just going to take a little bit of time off, you know, to maybe a year or two to be a stay-at-home mom with my son but that turned into 12 years of being a stay-at-home mom because in 1982, my daughter was born. So for 12 years, I did not work at all. Just uh, being a mom, making things, cleaning the house, doing the shopping, it's a lot of work to be a stay-at-home mom. So after 12 years of being a stay-at-home mom, I was pretty much unemployable. I hadn't worked in 12 years. I might could have got a job as a Walmart greeter or flipping hamburgers at uh, McDonald's or something like that, but that wasn't gonna make enough money for me to be able to support, help support my family. So um, at the same time that I was deciding that I really needed to go back to work, the kids were older, they were in school. Most of the day I decided that I really needed to try to go back to work. About that same time we were having a house built in Texas, a little bit north of Dallas. And I was at that home site every day. I had a punch list every day that I would send to the owner of the home building company. And he asked me to go to work for his company part-time. He knew I was looking for a part-time job. So I went to work for his company part-time and I did all kinds of little things. You know, I would had someone else that was doing the advertising and I would look it over and see if it needed to be changed, make sure it got Put in the Dallas Morning News and other places, and they put me on an assignment. Um, they decided that they wanted to try to cut out the middleman on all of the building materials that they use for building homes. So they wanted a big warehouse and like an industrial park where they could keep all the materials. So they set me out to go look for this industrial park that they could find. Keep in mind, I hadn't worked in 12 years. I didn't really know what I was looking for. But I'd heard that you could get good deals on foreclosures. So I went to all the banks, called all the banks and asked if they had any industrial parks that they foreclosed on. And I found one. I was able to buy an 11 acre industrial park and for $69,000, it already had buildings on it, the roads were in, the lights, everything was there. And I negotiated a discount 
with uh, economic development to get a reduction in the electrical and also the taxes for the property. So I saved them a ton of money and I got a $2,000 bonus. I was only making, I think, $1,800 a month. And this was in 1991. So I wasn't making much money and they gave me a $2,000 bonus for saving them a lot of money. And then that same company started a television show called Your New House. And it was all about how new homes were built. And they, with certain things that they did uh, that other builders didn't do. So to find the way, uh, if you wanted to find uh, the kind of a property that had what they wanted on that television show, you'd have to go to them. But on every television show, there's 13 commercials and they were, they'd hired some big advertising agency in New York to sell the advertising for them and they hadn't sold any advertising. So I was at lunch one time with the owner of the company and he says, yeah, I don't know what we're going to do. If we can't sell advertising, we're just going to have to shut down this television production company because the advertising pays for the production cost. And I said, well, what about this? And I gave him a couple of different ideas. And he said, well, why don't you give it a try? Remember, I was a part-time employee, but I'd become good friends with the owner of the company. So in about three months, I sold all 13 of the television commercials for over $20,000. And then I thought, well, maybe I need to learn a little bit more about this television advertising stuff. So I learned that you can also syndicate it. It was only showing in Dallas. And I uh, syndicated it to the rest of the United States to about 85% of the markets. So I did all these things. And um, I had no idea I could do that. It's because I didn't know that I couldn't do it, that I just went ahead and pursued it. And that's a good lesson for all of you. Don't say, oh, I can't do that. Because if you set your mind to it, you can do anything that you want to do. But after I sold all that advertising, then they thought, remember, I was a one-person show. I was the only one doing this. I had no boss to answer to, just the owner of the company. But after I sold all the advertising and after I did uh, all that work for the company and got a tiny little bonus, they thought that they should assign me a boss who was going to make like five times more money than I was. And I was the one doing all the work. So I made the decision to quit. I said, you know, that's it. I appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun, but I quit. Um, so the thing that I thought was really fun, it was it was fun to sell the advertising, but I really enjoyed the hunt for the real estate um, for the 11 acre industrial park. So I decided I was going to learn about real estate investing. And I went to the library because I didn't have any money. So I went to the library and read everything I could about real estate investing. And I started down that path with some real creative ways that I could make money uh, with real estate that didn't require buying the house. I didn't have to fix it up. I didn't need any, um, didn't really need any money. About $10 is all I needed for each deal. And I was making about $3,000 in less than a week. So I headed down that path. My very first year of real estate investing, I did 42 real estate transactions, averaging about $3,000 on each one of them. And I thought, what was I doing working for somebody else when I could have been doing this working for myself all along? Once again, it's just because um, I didn't, I never limited myself. You know, where, what was I going to do? Um, I wasn't going to get a job working at McDonald's, that was for sure. So I was just going to head down the path of doing this real estate. So I came up with all kinds of creative ways to do real estate investing. And that led me to uh, somehow or other people started learning about me. And I got calls from some of the big time real estate seminar people asking me to be a speaker at their seminars. So I started, in addition to my own real estate, I was teaching real estate seminars all over the world. And, um, but it gets old. Here I have these kids and a husband and all these other, you know, real estate is what was really fun. The seminars were a lot of work. So what I started to do was I just recorded the seminars that I taught. And then I created a membership website where people could go and watch all of my seminars and ask questions and learn things. So I transitioned my 
getting on an airplane and flying someplace almost every single week teaching a real estate seminar to just a complete online business. And that's one of the things that all of you should think about doing too, is whatever it is that you're doing right now, um, learn a way that you can transfer that into some kind of an online business. Instead of you physically meeting with people, instead of you standing up in a crowd of 500 people teaching a real estate seminar like I was, convert it into something online. You might not make as much money, but you're going to buy yourself some time. So along with that same line, I want to introduce you to a special guest that I have, Michael, um, who did something very similar. So Michael, I'm going to get you on here now, add you to the stream. So can Hello. you hear me? Okay? Yeah, I can hear you perfectly. Okay. So Michael, you did something. I don't know if you heard what I was just talking about, that I used to travel every week teaching real estate seminars and doing real estate deals in between it. And it was exhausting. And when I transferred all of that into an online business, instead, I got my life back. I got my freedom back. And you did something very similar. So tell your story. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a college planner. So I help families that are in high school, freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors transition into college by putting the right student in the right school and the right family in the right situation. It's not just about, hey, I'm going to go to Vanderbilt or I'm going to go to Texas or I'm going to go to wherever. We have to make sure that the schools are a right fit. So I used to travel um, all over Houston just recently and before that San Diego and then all over the all over the country teaching mm -hmm. my seminars. And I, I actually did the same had, thing. Um, yeah, I actually had um, uh, corporations that would hire me to come in and speak to their to their people. But then all of a sudden COVID happens and now I'm completely shut down and I've got no venue. I've got no audience. Well, luckily, I had recorded a couple of my presentations. So I took the recording of my best seminar. In fact, it was one that I did in Las Vegas and I transitioned that into what's called an evergreen webinar. So now people can come, go into a, if I give them a link to this website, they can go watch my webinar play automatically every 15 minutes on the hour. Mm -hmm. That allowed me the freedom to say, hey, I'm really fed up with what's going on in the, in the United States. You know, no matter what your political affiliation is, it was just, you know, bogging me down. And I didn't like all the noise. I was, I'm a beach guy and I was looking for, you know, I looked at Florida and I didn't care for it except for, you know, like St. Petersburg was kind of on my target range. Then I looked at Puerto Rico and I looked at some of the tax advantages there. And I thought, well, you know, the president with one stroke of a pen can change that. So I started researching other opportunities. And that's when I found Panama. And I said, hey, what? You know what? This is working for me. I'm making my money online 100 percent now. I can deal with my clients through Zoom meetings. So I took the plunge and I said, hey, I'm going to Panama. And I've been here 14 months and mm -hmm. love it. I remember when you first came, it was kind of a six month, let's see if this will work situation. Yeah, and you discovered, yeah. hey, this works. You know, I don't yeah. have to be, you know, I don't have to be in the same state or in the same country where the majority of my students are. I can run this business from anywhere. Yeah. And the, the only thing that I've, I've found after some, you know, I've, I've moved from place to place, like you suggest, to see, you know, what works for you. I've been renting. Um, just like you suggest, which has turned out to be the best thing, because that last time we spoke, the first place that I came to in Coronado, I thought it was my Shangri-La. I was mm -hmm. like, oh, my God, this place checks all my boxes. Well, within three months, I was going, OK, now the now the bugs are coming out of the closet. And I found out that, you know, I wanted to be someplace else for different reasons. So I've been transitioning. Um, in fact, I just signed a lease the other day. On a, on a new place that is just spectacular. But the, the, the thing for me that's important is the, the stability of the internet. So I'm mm -hmm. choosing to stay in the condo buildings because of my online business, because when the power does go out, which does happen from time to time, the buildings here have backup generators to where I can be back online within five minutes and I can pick up my phone immediately and use my phone for a hotspot. And I always tell my clients where I am and that, hey, you know, if I get cut off from you, bear with me. Don't 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 go anywhere because I'm going to be mm -hmm. back in five minutes and I'll reconnect through a hotspot. So, you know, I 
I went to Bocas del Toro recently because I love the area. I fell in love with it, but I tested the internet there and it just, mm -hmm. it, it can't work for my business because yeah. I'm doing Zoom meetings. If I had, I, so half of my business now I've transitioned because within my college planning space, I have little segments of things that the clients have within their packages when they hire me that I have now broken out into individual line items so that I can sell through Facebook ads, YouTube ads, and stuff like that. So I do have some passive income coming in uh, that's almost equal now to my, my college planning services. If that surpasses my college planning services, yeah, then maybe I can go to Bocas because I only have to check into my internet you know, every, every day, maybe once a day. But when I'm doing Zoom meetings, I need that stability. So I'm paying a little bit more than, than some people might for where I live. Um, and I, when I say a little bit more, it's so minute. It's unbelievable how inexpensive mm -hmm. it is here. But it's more than the and, average person. And you're in, me. are you in San Carlos, Panama now? Yeah, I'm actually in Vistamar. Yeah, yeah. I'm in, yeah, I'm in Vistamar. Vistamar so. Yeah. yeah, so the, the two towers on the highway, when you pull in, right. you guys are doing the tours. I'm right. the guy out there at the golf course that waves every time the bus goes by. <laughs> mm -hmm. So when I see the bus on Saturdays, if you see anybody waving, that's that's me that's out there. Yeah. So um, in a way, um, this whole COVID thing um, and the thought of, uh, you know, how am I going to transition my whole life and everything so that I can continue making. So, so many people were just shut down because of COVID. Their yeah, business yeah. was completely shut down. So it's great that, that you are thinking out of the box on yeah. how you can transition to not only were you having to stay at home, but your customers were staying at home as well. So it's the perfect thing to transition into an online business. Yeah. And not only that, what a perfect spot to, to ride out a pandemic. You know, because everybody was gone from, you know, all the expat communities for the most part, like the building I was in when I first got here was only in 10% occupancy. And I was like going, man, this is crazy. This is amazing opportunity for me. So I'm, I took advantage of it. And it's mainly because I bought the online guide and I started doing that research ahead of time, that I was able to transition smoothly. Yeah. Well, you know, the online guide helps a lot of people transition smoothly. And it's not just the, you know, this is how you get a visa. This is how you buy a car. This is how you get your driver's license. But it's who do you call? You know, who do you send a message to when you need some help? So we're always here for you, as you know. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm really, really happy for you with your new online business and how it's all working out. And, you know, even if uh, when the pandemic's over, you would never imagine going back to the way it was before, oh. getting on an airplane and traveling. It's no. better to do it the way it is. No, it's just so much more efficient to operate businesses like this mm -hmm. now. So it was, like I said, it, it was the best thing that happened to me. You know, sadly, I had a, you know, a lot of friends that were affected by COVID in a negative way. But, you know, when you, when you plan properly, you know, it, they all say that, you know, the, the big phrase back in real estate was by blood, you know, by, by, by when there's blood in the streets. Yeah. And the same thing was true here was, you know, when I came down here and I got my boots on the ground and I found, you know, the fact that, gosh, you know, when I first came here, I was paying a lot of money for a small unit in the building that I was in. But then I started talking to other people and it's like, OK, now I know that the prices are really half of what I was paying right. initially. And then you find out that it's even less than that. Yeah. Yeah, you learn that a, a lot of people, if they just look on Airbnb or they look online, the, the prices might seem incredible compared to where they are. But then you get here and whenever you're sitting at the bar drinking a beer and talking to somebody or you just meet your neighbors and you find out, well, you're paying $1,400, but they're only paying $950 for the exact exactly. same unit. So it's yeah. uh, that's why I tell everybody, you know, whether it's renting or buying, just do it short term. Because you, uh, you're going to only by being boots on the ground are you going to learn the right price to pay. And more importantly, the right unit. You originally thought the one you rented was perfect. But then after looking around a little bit, you found out there's a whole, whole other um, system of um, amazing places out there. Yeah, my place at Vistamar, I've got three bedrooms, four bathrooms overlooking the golf course for only $100 a month more than what I was paying before. Yeah. It's just, it's crazy. Yeah. Yep. 
you don't don't learn there's things to look around well congratulations yeah. on your new business michael and thank you for thank taking you. The time to share it with us you're welcome so, it was my pleasure okay thank you so much all right have a good one thank you michael so that's just one example of someone that had a business where, like me, he was getting on an airplane and flying around all over the place and teaching these little seminars, and he converted it into an online business, just like I converted mine into an online business from teaching real estate seminars on cruise ships and, um, and big conference rooms and hotels in Las Vegas and New York and Florida and everywhere. I um, switched everything over to online. So that's something for all of you to think about is the existing business that you have, how can that possibly be converted to something that's online? Uh, or how can you automate it a little bit more so it takes up less of your time? There's going to be some ways that you can do that. So that's one thing I wanted to talk about. I have several other online business ideas that I want to share with you. Um, so the other thing, let me switch over my notes here. The other thing is having a portable income that you need to think about that is um, whenever I was buying real estate, I was mostly buying in Texas. I did some things in Colorado, bought a couple things in Hawaii and Florida also, but mostly I was in Texas. So, um, but I was, I had to be there. I had to look at the real estate, but by transitioning to more of an online business, I could I can live in Panama. I can live anywhere to have an online business. So when you're thinking about how you're going to have this online business, think about how you can create a business that's portable, that it can go with you wherever you go. Just like Michael's business, he's living in Panama now. But what if next year he decides he wants to move to Mexico? No problem. That business can go where he is. If he wants to go to Portugal for six months, it's not a problem. His business is not going to shut down when it's an online business. It can go wherever you go. So when you're thinking about starting this online business, definitely think about a portable business that can go wherever you go. Yes, I'm going to talk about affiliate marketing in a little bit. The other thing that I did when I was a real estate investor and so many people were asking me, how in the world are you buying five houses a month? How do you do that? How are you, you know, what's your secret to being able to buy five, sometimes 10 houses a month and then getting them sold really, really fast, like in 24 hours? How do you do that? So I wrote several little books about doing, about how I did my secrets for real estate investing. These were the same things that I taught at seminars, but I gave a good overview of it in some real estate books that I published on Amazon. And that's something that all of you, have knowledge of things that you've learned over the years, whether you're a school teacher or you're a nurse or you were a firefighter or an airline pilot, whatever it is that you've been doing all of your life, there's a lot of people that would love to know how to do what you do. You might make the best pecan pie in your whole state and win awards for it all the time. You might be really good at making chili. Well, people would love to know your secret on how to make good chili, how to make a pecan pie, how, you know, if you, if you, let's uh, just give an example of 10 things I wish I knew before I became an airline pilot. What if you wrote a book like that of all the little things that you've learned over the years? An ebook is so easy to write. Um, and if you're not good at writing, which I'm not good at writing at all, but you can just kind of create an outline and then you can hire people on Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R.com to help you fill it in or to help you get the punctuation right, the spelling right, and to make it look good. So you, a book is something that you should all consider putting on Amazon. Um, it's so easy. It doesn't cost anything. You go to a website called KDP, which stands for Kindle Direct Publishing, kdp.amazon.com. You can sign up for a free account. They have all kinds of training readily available for you about how to publish ebooks on Amazon. They want you to write ebooks. The more, the better, because they get a commission on everything that you sell. So KDP is one way that you can get started with uh, publishing your ebooks. And it, maybe you're really good at fishing. Maybe you're really good at making cakes. Maybe you're good at finding um, house sitting opportunities. Whatever it is that you already know how to do, write about it in an ebook and sell it on Amazon. That's a really good way to get started. 
Um, one of the things that, um, by the way, you can get someone to help you make the book look really nice on Fiverr, but also you can get a book cover created. You're going to need a book cover also. And if you see that the sales are really, really good, then you might want to also um, sell a paperback book because some people prefer to have a paperback book. Once again, you can do all of that through the Amazon. You can sell it as a paperback and you don't have to have like 100 books printed or 1,000 books printed. Amazon has a, something that's called print on demand where you get one order for a book and then they print it and they ship it out. They get another order for a book, they print it and they ship it out. So you don't have to have any inventory at all. You only have to upload the content. So there's some other things that Amazon does to really help you sell your book. Like anything, like with my tour company, um, you see the reviews that we have, and that help, lets you know that other people thought that our tour was valuable, and the information that we provide is valuable. So um, whenever you get reviews on Amazon for your book that you write, then that helps you sell more books. The more reviews you get, the more books you're going to sell. So here's two things that you can do to get more reviews. One of them is you can run a sale. Amazon allows you to put your book on sale for five days per month, every single month. So if you run a sale, it doesn't really matter if you're not making very much money on your book that month. The objective is to sell more books so you can get more reviews. So put your book on sale for five days every single month, and that will help you get more reviews, which in turn will help you get more sales. The other thing, and this one's really crazy, is Amazon allows you to give your book away for five days out of every single month. So give it away. I mean, like you don't make any money. But that fact is you actually could end up making more money on the five days that you give your book away. Because Amazon sets aside a fund every single month. And it's usually between $25 million and $30 million. And they divide that between all the people that give their book away. So it's really quite possible that you can make more money on the five days that you give your book away than on the hundred on than the 25 days that you're actually selling it. But you can test it. You know, maybe you'll only give it away for two days a month. Um, all kinds of different things you can do to play around. Whenever you log into the kdp.amazon, they have all kinds of information um, that you can see on there on the analytics. Um, how many people looked at it, how many people bought it, all kinds of different things that you can see, which will help you um, sell more books. Once again, they provide free training um, to help you sell more books also. They'll have suggestions on how to write a good subject line, um, how to write a good description for your book, so you're going to sell more books. It's all free training that they're going to offer to you. Um, and you can do the paperback book as well. The paperback book, you might want to hold off on that until you actually um, have sold several, at least 100 of your um, digital books. That would be better. Um, the other thing that you can do is to help people become aware of it is you can send out a press release about your book. So a press release, I usually would go to Fiverr and just type in press release writer. And you can uh, have someone write a press release about your new book that just came out. And they can distribute it to TV stations, radio stations, newspapers, all over the internet so they can distribute it for you. It might cost about $50 to do that press release and have it distributed to about 2,000 outlets. But it's going to really help the sales of your book if you do that press release. So one other, I'm going to take your questions. I see all the questions coming in. But um, I'm going to wait and take your questions after I finish this talk about some different ways that you can make money with an online business. Another way that you can make money with an online business is to not actually have a business at all, but kind of be a freelancer. A freelancer is someone that does little jobs for other people. For example, I hired someone to design a book cover for Gary Scott, a friend of mine, Gary Scott, he's converting some of his reports. I'm helping him convert some of his um, reports into books, and then we're going to put them on Amazon. So I hired someone for $10 to create a really nice book cover for Gary on Amazon. So that guy that I hired is called a freelancer. He just did that one job for me. But there are websites where you can be a freelancer and you can offer your services 
to do jobs for other people. You might offer your services to build a website, to do customer service, to do data entry, to do accounting, whatever the job is that you have right now, you can do that job on some of these freelance websites that I'm going to talk about. You can hire freelancers to do jobs for you, but you can also put your resume up on these websites and you can do jobs for other people. It might be just one job that you have a contract to do. It might take um, a couple of days. It might be a situation where you have a um, part-time job that you just work part-time for the same company all the time, or even full-time employment is available. And some of the websites that you can be a freelancer are Upwork. That's one of the most popular. That's Upwork, U-P-W-O-R-K.com. And then Fiverr is a place where you can offer your services also. Um, there's also one called Freelancer and guru there's many many other ones if you just type a search engine for freelance opportunities or freelance then you're going to see all kinds of other websites and you're not limited to just advertising yourself or getting a job on just one of those websites you might have a job that you're doing for someone on upwork and have another job that you're doing for someone on freelancer and another job that you're doing on a coding website if you know how to do coding so there's all kinds of things you can do. And these are things, jobs, freelance jobs that you can do from home right now where you are or when you move to Panama or even when you're on vacation. Uh, you can do these. All you need is a laptop and a good Internet connection. And you're going to be able to do these. Um, so the other one I want to talk about, and this is one that I've been doing for about 20 years. And, I, and it's just a fun little project that probably takes an hour a month of my time, um, yet I can make as much as $1,000 a month with that hour, and that's flipping domain names. Now, I used to flip houses, and when you flip a house, is I would find old, beat-up, run-down houses, and I would talk to the owner, and i say, listen, I don't want to buy your house. I don't have the money. I don't have the skills to fix it up, but I know a lot of other people that do. So I would build a big list of buyers of those people that advertise We Buy Houses. And I had a huge list of thousands of people that wanted to buy houses, and I said, you know, if you'll let me have a contract on your house to buy it at this price, I'm going to sell it to this other person for $3,000 more. And if I can find a buyer, if I don't find a buyer, then, you know, I'm only going to type your house for one week. I just wanted one week to be able to sell their house. And I was always able to sell it in one week. Like I said, my first year, I sold 42 houses at about $3,000 each. And that was back in 1992. So in today's dollars, it would be even more. So domain flipping is very similar to real estate flipping. Um, you find a good domain name or you just, you know, I think of, think of them in the middle of the night sometimes. I'll get up two o'clock in the morning. I'll say, is this domain name available? And I'll go check and see. And it is. So I'll go buy it. And, um, you know, sometimes I'll build a little website to go with it. But usually I don't build any website at all. I'll buy the domain name for $8 and I'll put it on an auction website for $197, $797 at different prices. And I just, you know, the auction websites find a buyer for me. I don't have to do anything except buy it and click one little button and it's over on an auction website. So how do you figure out what you're going to buy it for, what you're going to sell it for, and where can you advertise your domain names? So I use um, GoDaddy to buy most of my domain names. And GoDaddy has uh, an appraisal system that's absolutely free. So any domain name that you're thinking about buying, if you just do a Google search for GoDaddy appraisal, um, the website will come up where you can put in the domain name and it'll tell you uh, this, this domain name is worth $1,500. This domain name is worth $12,000. This one's worth $50. Um, so that will help you decide what to buy and what not to buy on domain names. Of course, you want to buy something where there's a margin that you buy it at a low price and you sell it at a higher price. Um, so the GoDaddy is going to help you determine what the right price is for the property, uh, for the domain name. So typically I'm buying it for $8 and selling it for $197 to $797, usually within a month. I get it sold. I sell it really fast and it's all just a couple of clicks 
of a mouse to buy it and another click to put it on a website where it's an auction website. The two auction websites that I use are called After Nick, that's A-F-T-E-R-N-I-C. And uh, that's where I sell a lot of domain names. I also sell them on another one called Flippa, F-L-I-P-P-A. And Flippa is especially good if you've developed a little website to go with it. So you're selling a website, maybe with a couple of articles or some content on it, along with just the domain name. But you can sell just a domain name on there as well. The most I ever made was one time I bought a domain name for $8. And I have a guy in the Philippines that I work with that develops websites for me. For about 50 bucks, he can build a website in about an hour. And so then I put it on Flippa and I put it as an auction, a five-day auction that people could bid on who was going to buy it. And it ended up selling that for $12,000, that little website. So sometimes you can make quite a bit of money just flipping domain names, just like sometimes you can make a lot of money flipping real estate as well. So it's something very similar. So where's the good place to go to learn about flipping domain names? Hold on. So the best place to go to learn about flipping domain names is what I call YouTube University. You just go to YouTube and type in domain name flipping or flip domain names. And you'll get all kinds of good information on how to do that. Once again, this is an online business that is portable. You can take it wherever you go. You can run it from anywhere. Let me get another drink. Hold on. I'm going to take your questions in just a little bit. First, I want to get through these ideas of some online businesses for you. So domain name flipping, uh, the very first time I bought a domain name, it was $72. That was back when they first came out. Um, But now you can get them for $7 or $8. I buy them on GoDaddy. I have uh, an an account executive and I get a special price because I have so many domain names. So I always get them for less than $8. I know there's other places uh, where you can buy domain names, perhaps for even cheaper But I like GoDaddy because it's real easy to buy them. It's real easy to put them on that After Nick website to monetize it. And they just provide all kinds of other uh, support that makes it easy to work with them. So uh, the other way that you can make some money with an online business is selling products on Amazon. Now, you might be thinking, I don't want to have to keep a bunch of inventory and it's going to be way too expensive to ship it from Panama to someplace else. But this is what I did. Um, Instead of um, having a lot of inventory, you can buy um, products um, from the manufacturer directly. And then the manufacturer will ship them to the Amazon warehouse and Amazon fulfills the order for you. So you never have to touch the products at all. So one place that you can go to find products to sell is Alibaba. I don't know if you've heard of that before, A-L-I-B-A-B-A.com. Um, But anything that you can possibly imagine is available on Alibaba. Now, some of those manufacturers are in China or the Asian countries, but you can also find U.S. or Canadian manufacturers as well. Instead of Alibaba, you can also just do a Google search for whatever it is that you're looking for and find out if it's made in the United States or made in Canada or made in whatever country that you're in. And you can buy from the manufacturer directly. Once again, you can have it shipped directly to Amazon. So what I did, this is one of the products that I sold, is I sold an essential oil diffuser. I love essential oils, and I use a diffuser. Um, So I got it from, I think I bought 100 units from Alibaba, and I I had it private labeled. I had my logo and my company name. Uh, that I was using for that product that was imprinted right on the essential oil diffuser. And then they sent it to the Amazon warehouse. So my total cost for to have it private labeled for the essential oil diffuser was under $6, like $5.95 included shipping from China all the way to the Amazon warehouse. And then I sold that product for $50. So there was a really good profit margin in there. 
but there's so many different products. Some tips I can give you about selling Amazon products is whatever the top, and, and by the way, you can sign up to sell things on Amazon by going to amazonsellercentral.com. Once again, it's free to sign up. They have tons of free training to help you um, sell uh, products. They give you all kinds of free training besides YouTube University, of course, there's always going to be some training on there as well. So some of the tips that I can give you on picking the right product is um, you might want to pick a product of something that you're passionate about, something that you really like. For me, I love essential oils and essential oil diffusers. You might like fishing equipment. You might like uh, clothes. You can sell clothes on Amazon. You can have them made in China and then ship to Amazon to sell clothes. Or you might like... Uh, cookware, whatever it might be that you're already passionate about, that's something that you might want to sell on Amazon. Um, you want to avoid selling things that are the top 10 selling items, uh, whatever that might be. Um, go for like number, and Amazon has a chart in any particular category. Amazon has all kinds of categories. What are the top 10 sellers in a particular category? You don't want to sell there because there's too much competition for the top 10. Go to between 11 and 20, and then that little range of products is where you're, it's a sweet spot. It's where you're going to be able to not have very much competition. You're going to be able to sell things a lot. Remember, you can private label all the products. So it has your label, your logo, your label on it that you're selling. Amazon has a lot of tips on writing a subject line and writing a description to help you sell it. The, whenever the products are shipped there, then Amazon notifies you that your 100 or 500 items, whatever it might be that they've come in, and then you can start selling it right away. When an order comes in, of course, Amazon collects the money, Amazon packages it up, Amazon ships it out for you. It's called Fulfillment by Amazon. They get a commission on any of your products, so you need to factor that in. And um, But still, you're going to be able to make a really good product if you buy things right. You don't want to buy things where you buy it for 40 and you're selling it for 50 because Amazon's going to get that profit and there won't be anything left over for you. There has to be enough of a profit margin in there for you to be able to make money when you're selling on Amazon. One of the ways that you can make money, um, that you can find local manufacturers and not go through Alibaba is uh, something called thomasnet.com. And they have a big book at the library if you'd like to go to the library, but it's also online. You can find manufacturers that are close to where you are to sell the products. Um, there is one other little thing that I wanted, that I forgot to tell you about selling ebooks on Amazon. Um, there's all kinds of other websites where you can sell ebooks also. Um, there's Lulu and a bunch of other ones where you can sell websites. One time I was even contacted by a publisher that said that they wanted to sell all of the books. And I had like 37 books at the time. They wanted to sell my 37 books at the time. But don't do it. Only keep your books on Amazon. I was making two to $3,000 a month selling my eBooks on Amazon. And then when I went with this publisher, all of a sudden my income went down to zero. They weren't reporting anything. They were keeping all the money. Uh, that same guy is now doing tours here in Panama. So only sell them on Amazon. You don't want to go uh, to any of the other places. Even though it's tempting, you might have a little bit of a better profit margin. Go on Amazon because that's where so many buyers go already. Um, you can also get uh, your books um, translated into other languages if you wanted to, but just stick with your language initially and don't test out other things. So the other one I want to talk about, and it's also on Amazon. Amazon is such a wealth of um, information for you on starting an online business. They have an affiliate program. So there's a lot of places have affiliate programs. Here at Panama Relocation Tours, we have an affiliate program that you can sign up for. And you can make money every time you help us sell a tour or every time that our complete Panama relocation guide is, is sold. Um, you can get a commission on that. But on Amazon, you can go to their affiliate program, uh, .amazon.com, and there's just about any product line that you could possibly be interested in. You can earn anywhere from 5 to 50% commission on selling products for them. 
So where would you sell it? Well, you might advertise it on Facebook um, Marketplace. You could do it right there. Uh, or you might even have a little blog that you're working on that's about uh, quilting supplies or that's about fishing or cooking or whatever it is that you're passionate about. If you really love to cook, um, you can go to Amazon Affiliate Program and you can find all kinds of products that you can make a commission on that are about cooking and special little tools that you use when you're cooking. And you can put those, just put a little link on your website. It'll show the picture, show the description. When somebody clicks on that and they buy it, you get a commission. So you might have one website that's about cooking, another blog that's about fishing, another blog that's about your move to Panama. And you could sell Panama maps and you could sell Panama relocation tours and all kinds of other things. Once again, it doesn't cost anything to start with affiliate marketing. All you have to do is just take a little bit of your time to research the products. A blog, you can start with no money at all uh, initially using some of the blogging websites, but it's better if you get your own domain name and have it go there. And then you can just add these different products that are affiliate products. So there's one other thing that I want to tell you about that I know a lot of people are making money with this, but it's something I have no experience with at all. To be perfectly honest, I've never done this, so I don't know how it works. And some people have YouTube channels and they monetize their YouTube channel. Um, you have to sign up for the YouTube partner program. You have to have at least a thousand subscribers to your YouTube channel. And then you can sign up for the YouTube partner program. You need to make sure that it's available in the country where you live. It is available in Panama and the United States, of course. Um, so then you can, and I don't know how it works, but you can put advertising on your YouTube channel. Now, right now on my YouTube channel, you, they put advertising on there. I didn't pick it. I didn't put it there. I don't want it on there. And YouTube is making all the profit from it. I don't monetize my YouTube channel. But that's something that if you like shooting videos of different things, you could monetize your YouTube channel. And I know there's some people that they even have something called Patreon, I believe is how you pronounce it. And it's where you have certain people that help support the cause of you being a, a vlogger. Vlogger is a V for video and then blogging. And um, they may get some special videos for people that give you $10 a month or $5 a month or $20 a month. Special people that are your followers that you can make some extra money that way. The estimates are, uh, from the research that I've done, the estimates are that for every thousand viewers, you're going to make about $2. So if you can really build the uh, following of your channel up, then you can, you can make some money. And that's why you hear a lot of people say, subscribe to my channel. And I say the same thing, subscribe to our channel, just so you can know what are the, the next videos that are coming up. But we don't in any way monetize our YouTube channel. We just want you to subscribe to it so that you can know what the new videos are that are coming out. By the way, our next video is going to be all about how to bring your pets into Panama. So you want to make sure that you do subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you click that little bell, then you'll get an instant notification as soon as um, that video is available. So there's a variety of different ways that I've presented on how you can set up an online business that you could start right now before you even move to Panama. Or if you've moved to Panama or you're moving to Mexico or wherever you are, then there's... Um, a lot of different ideas on how you can make some money. I'm just scratching the surface. There's so many other things you can do. Um, some people like to play video games and they make money doing that. There's all kinds of ways that you can make money. So it's all about thinking outside the box. Uh, many of you uh, went to high school, then you went to college, and then you got a job and you've been an employee your whole life and that's all you've ever known. I was different. I hated every single minute of high school. I skipped high school every single day. Um, yet, all I had to do was read the book and take a test and I could make straight A's. So I still graduated from high school. I just didn't feel the need to go to the class. And my thinking was if high school was so miserable, I couldn't imagine college being miserable too. So I never went to college. Um, I just didn't feel the need to go to college. Instead, 
I headed down this path of being an entrepreneur, and it's turned out pretty well without the college education. So all of you, I encourage you to watch some YouTube videos, watch some movies, you know, find other information that you can about being an entrepreneur and starting an online business. And I think it's going to open up your eyes to a whole lot of new opportunities. If you haven't already done so, make sure and go to the Panama Relocation Tours website. And in the upper right-hand corner, type in Fund Your Freedom. And there's a free ebook that I have that outlines some of the things that I've already talked about. And you can get that free ebook. Doesn't cost anything. Um, if you weren't taking notes, most of the things I talked about are in that ebook. So you can get that free ebook. And then share the book and share this video with other people. So now, wow, I've talked for 50 minutes, a long time. So I'm going to take your questions now. If you have a question for me about starting an online business, I don't want any questions about bringing your pet into the country or getting a visa. We're going to just focus only on an online business. Um, then you can type those in right now. So if anybody has a question for me. So Ruth says, I already have an LLC in the U.S. where I sell life insurance that I can use for other businesses. So um, this is something that you really need to talk to an attorney about. It's not a good idea to put uh, more than one business in the same LLC. Because if for some reason um, your the one if you were your life insurance business, if that business were to get sued, then it could take down any other business that you, that you have. It's better to have a separate business for each type of business that you're doing. So this one says, Lee, with a Panama Pensionado, can you domain flip? Yes, you can. So with a Panama Pensionado visa, um, you to work in Panama, if you're selling products or you're selling services in Panama, then you need to get a work permit. You can't get one if you get a pensionado visa, except under very few circumstances. But with a pensionado visa, you can absolutely do domain name flipping and you don't owe any taxes in Panama because Panama has a territorial taxing system. You're not selling those domain names in Panama. You're selling them someplace else, some other country. So you wouldn't owe any taxes in Panama. Now, I can tell you that you will owe taxes on your profits that you make with domain name flipping in your country. However, um, it's considered an active income. It's an active earned income. So if you're a U.S. citizen, you qualify for the foreign earned income exclusion, which means you can make up to $112,000 a year flipping domain names or doing any of these other online businesses, and then you don't owe any taxes. Only if your income goes over 112000 will you owe some taxes. So another question, I think the question above concerns the best area for stable, fast internet is a good one. Uh, for instance, how is Bukete? So um, good, fast internet is definitely important if you have a business like Michael has, where you're going to be doing Zoom calls or like I'm doing this call on a Saturday and I need good internet for that. There have been a few times I've had to cancel our conference call or cancel live stream because my internet wasn't working. The thing you want to look for is a place that has fiber optics. If there's fiber optics, then you're going to have much better internet than you would at a place that's just satellite internet. So definitely look for fiber optics. I have 250 megabits of internet speed, so my speed is really good. It's just if a tree goes down and it takes my internet down or there's a big storm, or something that my internet goes down, but it doesn't happen very often. Now, Michael knows how to use a hotspot from his cell phone. I have that available too. I've just never tried to do it, so I don't know how. Not yet, anyway. I can always learn. So Greg says, we're coming for an exploratory trip in two weeks, visiting San Carlos, David, Boquete, Vulcan. Can we move there on a digital nomad visa that convert to a pensionado visa when your social security starts? Um, you could move here on a digital nomad visa. Uh, for, for people that don't know what that is, is you um, have to show that you're already making $3,000 a month in your business. And at first you get a nine month visa to live in Panama. You also get a driver's license. It's good for nine months. Then you can renew it for one more 
uh, nine months. So for 18 months, you could have a digital nomad visa and then convert to the pensionado visa. So does MLM income qualify as out of country income? So MLM, which stands for multi-level marketing, it only qualifies for out of country income if you're not selling any products or any services in Panama. So if you have some product like the, uh, I think there's some kind of essential oil that's a multi-level marketing, um, you can't sell that in Panama or you'd have to pay taxes in Panama. You need a work permit in Panama. So you can't sell it in Panama. So Daryl says, are the business structures similar to what we have in the U.S., LLC, S Corp, C Corp? Or can I set up a business there before I make a move? So the business structures are not exactly the same um, as the United States. Um, they do have corporations, but it's not divided into C Corp and S Corp. Um, and they do have something that's very similar to an LLC. So those things are available here in Panama. Um, we have a list of immigration attorneys that can help you with the corporation in our complete Panama re relocation guide, which you can see on our website when you click on online guide up at the very top. So did you say the Find Your Freedom ebook could be found in your search engine? It's actually Fund, F-U-N-D, Your Freedom ebook. If you search on our website, on the PanamaRelocationTours.com website, in the upper right-hand corner, there's a little spyglass. And if you type in fund, F-U-N-D, your freedom, then you'll have a link right to that book that you can get it for free. So can I start a photography business in Panama? Certainly you can start a photography business in Panama, but once again, that's going to be um, if you're selling those photographs in Panama, then you're going to have to pay taxes in Panama and report that income in Panama. Only if you sell them outside of the country uh, could you not have to pay taxes in Panama. And that, that could change. You know, Panama may change their taxing structure. There's a lot of people that write articles for um, and take pictures that they sell to International Living and other publications. So that's certainly an opportunity. Another question, um, how much personal income must I have coming in to qualify for moving to Panama? So the question, the answer to that is it depends on which visa you're going to get. If you get the pensionado visa, then you only need to show that you have $1,000 a month in lifetime income, like Social Security, military, retirement, pension from a job. Then you only need $1,000 a month in lifetime income. So that's the most affordable one. Another question from Tom. I see many individuals leaving good reviews on how Mr. Graham Dawson helped them become debt for three through good profits earned. Um, I don't know. I don't know anything about who he is. I don't know anything about it. So I can't comment on that. But it sounds like that is uh, an ad. And. I hate it whenever people come over to my live streams and try to advertise other people's products or services. It's not a cool thing to do, folks. So, so yes, you have to act to get the visa in Panama. You have to actually be receiving uh, that pension for you to qualify. Other things like rental income and dividends, uh, annuities, they don't qualify. So Renee has a good question, private labels. Is it getting your own private label established very expensive? It's not expensive at all. It usually costs about $10 uh, to get your own private label established. Once again, the ones that I've done for private labeling, I go to Fiverr. Um, there's uh, some other websites that you can go to, but Fiverr is the cheapest one. And you can get a logo design that has your company name and a logo that goes for your essential oil diffuser or whatever you might be selling. And then you just send that file to whoever's producing your product and they print it right on your product. So you have your very own product line. And you might start with, um, let's say that you were selling, I'm not essentialized, but let's say you were selling men's clothes 
and you might have like 10 different shirts and pants and socks and belts and hats and all kinds of things that all have your label on it. So you can start your whole product line. Um, Joseph, do you have any in, if you don't have any income, but have a lump sum, is that okay? Unfortunately, Joseph, um, in Panama, if you want to get the pensionado visa, you have to have monthly income. For the lump sum, the way that it works is they have something called a friendly nation visa. And that is, um, you can either deposit $200,000 into a Panama bank account, into a three-year CD, where it's going to earn 3.5% interest, or you can buy $200,000 worth of real estate. Um, or you can get a job in Panama, and there is a way that you can even set up a company in Panama, and then that job hires you to do one of these online businesses that I'm talking about. So the Friendly Nation visa might be a better way if you don't have the monthly income. I'm going to take a couple more questions. Jackie, I'm a property manager here in the States. I'd like to do that in Panama, servicing an expat market. Would that be legal? Um, it'll be mostly online business. No, nope. um, actually, uh, because you're going to be showing properties, you're going to be um, selling a, a service to expats. Um, you have to get a special kind of visa, like the Friendly Nation visa that will allow you to get a work permit. So you definitely don't want to just get a pensionado visa if that's what you're going to be doing. We need good property managers. We need honest property managers. So come on down. We need that. Another question, the Fund Your Freedom webpage doesn't work, error message found. Um, let me go there and see it right now, just a second. One second, I'm going to the website. So I got the website. It worked just fine. Let me uh, put up a link to it. One second and I'll create a banner that takes you right to it. So right at the bottom of the page, I put PanamaRelocationTours.com resources fund your freedom overseas. Another way you can get there is if you look on our website, and it says free resources in the drop down menu. There's a link to the Fund Your Freedom Overseas page right there. So it is definitely available. So now let me get back to the comments and I'll ask, answer a few more questions. So where can I find a list of all the online business ideas you talked about today? So you can find them in that Fund Your Freedom Overseas book that I just put the banner up for a few minutes ago. Also, a good fast way to get there is if you go to um, free resources on our website, look at the drop down menu, then click on Fund Your Freedom Overseas right there. Uh, mine said the same thing when I check my email, the Fund Your Freedom was there. So. Um, it might be that we've got 349 people trying to download the book all at the same time. And if you just try again in a few minutes, I'm sure it's going to work. Um, the book is there for you to have for free anytime you want to, and you're welcome to share it with other people. Um, do you have a website with single family homes that I can look at? Well, that's not really about um, a setting up an online business, but um, if you'll send an email to info at Panama Relocation Tours, I'll be glad to answer that question. So if anybody has any questions about starting an online business or any of the things that I've talked about, um, then you're welcome to ask a question about that. Um, what buy, sell, buy, sell says, can I live in Panama and sell gold jewelry online to Panamanians? Um, you can sell gold jewelry online to Panamanians, but I can tell you they're not going to buy it. Um, Panamanians wouldn't really trust it if it was online. They're going to go see it. They want to go see it and they want to have it um, evaluated to make sure that it's good before they're going to buy it. So you're not going to have much of a good chance doing that. 
So fl flipping domain names, do you have a lot of competition for flipping domain names? You know, there is plenty of people. If you go to afternick.com or any of the auction websites, there's plenty of people that are flipping domain names. The thing is, is you have to um, have a domain name that other people want. The trick that I have that makes me, that helps me sell my domain names really fast is if I do the appraisal to see how much it's worth. And if it says it's worth 1500, I sell it for 50% less. So I'll put it on the market for $997 or $797. But if you try to get full price for it, then you might not sell it at all, or it could take longer. But if you sell it where there's still a little bit of juice in there, there's a little bit of profit for somebody else in there, then you're going to sell it very, very quickly. But, you know, sometimes I just wake up in the morning and says, you sold two domain names uh, while I was sleeping. I love the fact that it's a business that I can make money while I'm sleeping. Everybody should check into that. So I'm just going to take a couple more questions. Um, so Jackie, you're an amazing businesswoman. I'm inspired to move forward on several ideas. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, you know. And it all just sort of happened by accident, only because I'd been a stay-at-home mom for 12 years and I was unemployable, did I, I head down this path of being an entrepreneur. And it's so much fun. You know, and some people ask me, well, gosh, you've got your Panama Relocation Tours and I have a website for training real estate investors and I flip domain names and I sell stuff on Amazon. And why do I do all that? I do it because it doesn't feel like work. It's just fun. Uh, and if, if what you're doing is fun and it doesn't feel like work and it takes a minimal amount of your time, then why not? Why not do it? I mean, you could just be retired and play golf and volunteer and do all those fun things. But if you, if you can do something that you just make a thousand or two thousand or three thousand dollars a month extra, you can live in Panama on that much money or you can save it um, to have a, a better retirement. Or you can uh, say all the money I make for my online business, I'm going to use to take one amazing trip every single year. So treat yourself with the money that you make from these online businesses. So I hope that I've given you some ideas on how you can set up an online business. Maybe get it started before you actually move to Panama. But uh, once you get to Panama, even if you're a pensionado, uh, these are all things that you can do and they don't take up very much time. So um, do something that you love and it's never, ever going to feel like work. And do something that's fun and it's never, ever going to feel like work. And, you know, how can, be, how can it be fun to flip domain names? It's just fun to know that I can buy something for $8 and sell it for $200 the week later. It's just a fun thing to do. Um, so um, if you have any other questions, you guys know you can always send us an email to info at PanamaRelocationTours.com. And I'm glad to answer any questions that you had. But I hope you've enjoyed these tips. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that little bell so that you can get a notification about our next live stream and also the next video that we have coming out, which is all about bringing your pets into Panama, whether it's in cargo or whether it's in cabin and all the steps that are involved in bringing your pets. I know your fur babies are important to you and you don't want to miss that one. Thank you so much for your time on Saturday and joining me for this live stream, everybody. Have a good uh, weekend. Bye.